Join me as I explore the exciting world of model railways with behind the scenes features, step by step tutorials, interviews, videos, reviews, and much, much more. I'm Dawn Quest and I love building model railways. Hi everyone, and after a busy few weeks of filming, it's really great to be back in the studio and to do some modeling. And today I'm going to show you three easy fences to make for your model railway layout, be it double O gauge, HO gauge, N gauge, whichever gauge you're using. And as you can see, I've created two little dioramas here. This one is a more rural setting in the style of a GWR layout, for example. And this one is a more contemporary industrial setting. And this one actually uses two different styles of fences there. Why go to all the trouble? Well, of course, the first consideration is cost. The materials I'm using are really cheap, really effective. You can find them in your home. And for example, this one in the rural setting, if I made 20 foot of this fencing, it would cost you around nine pounds. And for my US and European subscribers, the conversion, that's um, nine pounds and whatever your conversion rate is. Oi, don't forget our Japanese subscribers and all that Kato stuff. Uh, well, that's 1,965 yen. Uh, we're going to edit this out, right? No. OK, so, well, <laughs> moving on, I'm also working on this layout. This is a work in progress. And as you can see, the fencing here, I've customized it. I'm painting it green. And it's great. Well, the great thing about making your own fencing is, of course, you can make it really unique and customize it to your own setting. So we're going to get started. We're going to start with this industrial fencing here. Let's clear the decks and let's get going. So the first type of easy build fencing I'm going to show you can be used in a modern industrial setting, for example, as shown here, or actually used in any era. Here it is installed on my brief encounter model railway, which is showing a 1940s wooden fence. For this one, you can paint it any color. You can paint it green for that Southern Railways look, just like a permanent way fence I saw on a line near me recently. But have you guessed how this fencing is made yet? It's track. And the idea for using track came to me when I was building my brief encounter monochrome model railway layout because I wanted to put a fence in between my branch line and my tram line. And so I just happened to have a bit of R603 long track lying around. I grabbed that. I had my branch line here, my tram line there. And then it came to me. I looked at it and realized that to scale, this represents the size of an eight foot, roughly eight foot fence. As you can see here from the picture, there's your bus, there are a couple of people, and this fence is around eight and a half feet. And then I had a bit of a eureka moment because I realized that if I used an N-gauge track, it would be the same kind of scale. It would still be an eight and a half foot fence when used against N-gauge people, N-gauge accessories and vehicles. So here are the materials you'll need. Some spare track, some coffee stirrers, rail snippers, some clamps or some clothes pegs will also do. PVA glue, some paint and a paintbrush, and some signage and posters of the era you're using. So to start, here is your piece of track, i.e. your fence. And here is the front section. And if you turn it over, of course, here are your two rails. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rails. Well, I'm just going to remove one of them. You could remove both if you wanted to, but I prefer to keep the bottom rail in and I'll explain why in just a moment. So how we're going to do this is you take your piece of track and while you're pushing down against the track with your thumb, you're going to be pulling up against the rail with your finger and it should come off quite easily like that. Okay, job done. So once you've done that, you'll be left with your track with your one rail there. Now, if you're using a longer piece of track, what you'll notice is you're going to have smaller sections along the length of the track and they're all joined together by the rail. Now, what we want to do is if you can see at the end of the track, you'll see this pattern here. And obviously that's not going to work very well with our fence pattern. So we want to get rid of that. We want to remove that bit. And for this, we're going to use our rail snippers. And I'm also going to wear some safety goggles because these bits can fly all over the place once you cut them. So I'm going to grab my safety goggles and get my rail clippers and then I'm going to get to work. So this is the section that I'm going to get rid of. 
Now, with your snippers, if you cut on the vertical like that, you've got less surface area, so it makes it a lot easier to snip like that. This bit's going to be the harder bit because obviously it's got the rails, so give it a good squeeze. Ow! Stop it. Right, now we've done that. We've prepared our fencing. I'm going to put the goggles down there. And what you're left with is this nice piece of fencing panel. The next step is to create the base for it. And this I'm going to do with these coffee stirrers. And these are going to represent a nice concrete base. And what I will eventually do, we're going to paint these first and then they're going to be placed either side of this track, one there and one on the other side to match. And if you can see, the reason I kept the rail in, it, it creates a really nice border along the bottom there. So that looks really, really nice. So the first step here is to paint these coffee stirrers. And so I'm going to grab my paintbrush, grab my paint. And luckily I had a lot of gray paint left over from my brief encounter monochrome model railway, lots of these little tester pots. I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use um, a lighter color for the concrete. This color I'm going to use for the fencing panels in just a little bit here. This one is called Storm Cloud. Um, it's a nice little test pot there. So grab your paint, grab a brush, and literally we're just going to start painting. Okay, so I've just painted one and I'm just going to put it to dry. So I grabbed one of these from eBay. They're about five pounds and I use these for my, um, when I'm doing some airbrushing. So I'm just going to put it in there and leave it to dry. It shouldn't take long to dry while I paint the second one. And now that that's finished, I'm just going to pop this one to dry and just pop this to the side down here. And now we're going to paint the fence panels. Now, what you might notice on your pieces of track, you sometimes get the manufacturer's names or the code names along the pieces of track. So the first step is to give them a light sanding just to get them nice and even and remove the names, remove the branding there. And now we're going to paint it. And for this one, I'm going to use a darker gray, that color there. And this one is called Princeton. And again, literally, it's just about slapping the paint on. But what I would recommend you do if you want a really nice finish is to paint one side first, leave it to dry before you paint the others. Otherwise, you're going to end up with lots of smudges and lots of smears. So I'm just going to paint this one first. The little bit of trickiness with this rail is there's lots of different edges. So you're going to have to paint inside and all the different corners. So let me start here. Now that's nice and dry, I'm just going to paint the other side. So everything's now painted, the fence panel's painted, the concrete base is painted, and now it's time to have some fun with some glue and assemble it all together. First thing I'm going to do is just measure that the coffee stirrers are the exact length for the panelling. So I'm just going to put this across here, across the bottom, and just make sure I've got the right size, and I'm just going to snip the ends off. I'm going to do it here and do it here as well okay and then we're going to do the same for the other side as well so just take your other coffee stirrer and measure it again make sure you've got the painted section if you notice the bit that's unpainted that's where i was holding it so okay just hold it and give it a little clip and now i'm going to glue them so i'm going to grab my brush grab my pva glue just give it a light coating of glue. And this is the bit I always make a lot of mess with. I'm just going to stick it onto the bottom there, underneath that little steel rail. Use it as a guide. There you go, and press it in. I'm going to turn it over now and do the other side. Again, this is where I always get sticky fingers and just pop, pop it on the other side. Align it and make sure it's all nicely aligned at the bottom. Wipe off any excess glue there. Now, this is going to need a few minutes to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this so that it sets. And this bit gets a little bit fiddly, but these clamps are really, really good for this. Or you can use, as I said before, you can just use your common garden clothes pegs and as you can see I've added the second clamp there 
Now this is ready for you to add your signage, your posters, anything you'd like to put on there. But I want to show you a second step here that you might want to use if you're using a different kind of layout. For this one, using the separate steps and painting the coffee stirrer separately is really great if you're using different materials. So for example, if you wanted a brick base or a concrete base and a wooden or metal fence. But what if you just wanted to use one color? Well, then that's even easier. I fancy painting this a nice Southern Railway green. What you would do is before painting anything, you'd just glue on your coffee stirrers, snip the edges, and then paint the whole thing as one, the fence panels and the base all in one color. So right here, here's a color I prepared earlier. As I said, this is my Southern Railway green, and I've mixed up a nice selection of green paints for you there. And this is about as close as I can get to the color I need. So I'm going to paint this all in one go. As you can see, it makes it so much easier just to paint it all one color. This is probably going to need a couple of coats of paint because unlike the dark gray colors, this is a little bit more transparent. And then I'm going to paint the back. Probably give it a second coat and then it'll be ready for me to put my signage on. Why Southern Railway Green? Well, it's the colour of my local railway, so I'm particularly fond of it. So here it is, it's finished, this fence, and I've turned it from a contemporary industrial looking fence into a 1950s Southern Rail fence. I've added some signage, some posters, and I think that looks very nice. So the next two fences I'm going to show you use this. This is plasterboard tape, otherwise known as scrim tape. And it's the tape plasterers use to patch up holes in walls. And it's really, really cheap as chips. In fact, this cost me around five pounds for about 45 meters worth. So I could make fences as long as I want to my heart's content and it would only cost me pennies. So the first fence I'm gonna show you using this plasterboard tape is the chain link style industrial fence. So here are the materials you'll need for the chain link fence. Some plasterboard tape, cocktail sticks, coffee stirrers, clamps or ordinary clothes pegs will do, some PVA glue, scissors, some paint and paintbrushes, and some signs and posters in the era that you're working in. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make one fence panel. And for this, I'm just going to use one coffee stirrer and I've already cut it in half. And as you can see, I've trimmed the edges off it as well. And this will represent a fence panel of around seven feet high by 12 feet across, roughly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plasterboard tape and I'm going to roughly measure out a length. It doesn't have to be exact because I can always trim it up later. So I'm just going to cut that like that, just to put this to one side. And I'm going to pull this off. What I do is I always mark the end of it because once this sticks together, it becomes quite hard to unstick it. Now you have your width of plasterboard tape, there are two ways you can do the next step. You could either cut this tape in half, lengthways across like that. That will create a nice simple chain link pattern. The disadvantage of this though is it's not quite as sturdy, so you'll need more upright supports for that. What I like to do is I like to fold my tape in half that creates the right height, but it also creates this lovely kind of more complex chain link pattern, which I think really looks good. I like this effect a lot. The thing about this though, this tape is adhesive. So if you fold it in half, it will stick. But what I found is it won't stick for long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra layer of glue just to make sure this sticks permanently. You can either spray the glue on, mix a bit of PVA glue with some water, or you can just paint it on, and that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to give a light covering of glue for this. So I'm just going to put a bit of a protective base down. I'm going to grab my brush, grab my glue, and just, it doesn't have to be exact. It can just be lightly dotted around, and not too much because you're going to end up with very sticky fingers with this. As you can see, I'm just doing a very rough coating like that, and that should be sufficient. Probably put a little bit more around the edges because it's the edges that will probably fray more than other parts. So that's done. I'm now going to just get this out of the way. I'm now going to fold this in half, and you can try and match up 
the lines, but I wouldn't worry too much about that because as you can see, it creates a really nice complex pattern. So really squeeze hard and push these edges together so it sticks nice and firmly. And there you have it, that's your chain link fence. The next step is then to add your bases. And this is where your coffee stirrers come into play. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to stick these coffee stirrers on either side of the fence. So once again, I'm going to go to my glue and I'm going to apply a thin layer of glue to each side, to the side of each coffee stirrer. Like that. As you can see, it's already coming apart, so you do need to give it a bit of time to stick. So I'm going to put it on the on the bottom of this one first, and I'm going to put it with the rough edge, the unfolded edge at the bottom, and this will help secure it in even more. So there we go. I'm just going to press firmly down. I'm going to glue the other stirrer like so, and again, I'm going to press it on top try and match up exactly with the base like that Again, keep pressing down on the on the fence on the mesh and then what you end up with is you end up with a piece that looks like that once you've glued the coffee stirrers on then is a good idea just to clamp them a little bit with some clothes pegs i'm just using basic clothes pegs here make sure that you've got the right bit on there so it's nice and solid and then allow it to dry for a few minutes. So while that's drying, I just want to talk to you about a different technique where you can create more bespoke engineered style fencing. And that means creating curved fencing. But where would you use curved fencing? Well, maybe you're creating some arches on your layout. How you would do that? Well, you would take your coffee stirrer. Now watch what happens if I try to bend it. Well, it just splits and breaks. Not very, very helpful. The trick is then to dip this just for a few minutes in some hot water. So I'm just going to go and dip this in some hot water. I'll be right back and I'll show you how it's done. So I'm back with my coffee stirrer. It's been soaking in some hot water for just a few minutes. And I'm just going to very gently, very slowly start to bend it. Now it's not going to bend into a complete circle, but it will bend to create a nice little curve. So just apply a little bit of pressure, not too much. And keep going until you get the shape that you want. And so if you move towards the end a little bit. As you can see, I'm gently applying pressure from the middle out towards the ends. And there you go, you have a nice curved section. Now I could work on this a little bit more and bend it a little bit more and maybe even wet it again just to make sure I've got the shape that I want. But I'm quite happy with that curve. That looks quite nice. Now, in the same way I created the straight fence, I would use two of these coffee stirrers and I would put the mesh in between both, glue them together and clamp them. And there you go. I'd have a nice curved fence. So I think this is just about dry now. I'm going to very gently remove the pegs. And now I'm going to show you how to do the vertical supports. And for this, I'm going to use cocktail sticks. So these are just standard cocktail sticks. I'm going to put them in as they are and then I'm going to trim them afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this cocktail stick through the holes from the top of the fence down to the bottom. So this is where sewing classes at school came in handy. So here we go. I'm just going to push this through the top. Now this is a little bit sticky, a little bit tricky. So just bear with it. And the more holes you can thread the cocktail stick through, the better because that way it will create a nice, strong, sturdy support. So once again, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to bring out the cocktail stick on the other side. So you'll see it's a little bit scrunched up, so just use your fingers to manipulate it back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, taking my other cocktail stick. Once again, I'm going to thread it through the top, all the way to the bottom, in and out like so. It does take a little bit of effort there. For my other fence, I'm going to show you a different technique with these cocktail sticks. But um, for this one, we're going to put the cocktail sticks so that they're level with the bottom of the fence there. So before I paint this, I'm just going to trim off one of these cocktail sticks and I'm going to use the other one to hold while I paint. So 
right now I'm going to grab my safety glasses because cocktail sticks, when you cut them, can be quite problematic. Here we go. And I'm going to leave these edges on for now and I'm going to trim them later. So the next step is to paint. So the paint I'm going to use for this fence is this lovely silvery enamel colour. You could use any colour you wanted, black, green, whatever colour you want. But for this, I'm going to use silver. It looks very effective on this type of fence. Just going to put my cardboard down to protect my mat. And I'm going to use this, to hold it while I'm painting. So I'm just going to hold this down against the cardboard. What you'll find is that the drier the brush, the better, because what you don't want to happen is for the paint to collect in the holes, the gaps in between the mesh, because that way it won't look as good as realistic. So I'm going to make this brush as dry as possible and then just very quickly go over, pushing the paint in to the wire, to the mesh, and then coating the coffee stirrer. And doing the same with the cocktail stick. Again, you might need a second coat for this coffee stirrer section here. I'm just going to quickly turn it over and do the other side. Pushing it down. And of course, make sure that you do the ends here. And there we have it. If you hold it up to the light, you can see any areas that you've missed or any areas where the paint has collected in the mesh, but that looks quite good to me. Again, I'm going to leave this to dry and then I'm going to give it a second coat. You can already see that looks pretty lovely. It's quite shiny, quite silvery. So all that's left to do is to make sure that bit's painted. And now I'm going to snip off the other side and trim off the edge of the mesh. All I need to do now is just paint that top bit there where it's been cut, the raw edge. And there you go. That's your chain link fence. Now, of course, if you wanted to create a longer fence, all you would do is you'd cut a longer piece of your plasterboard tape and then you would use more coffee stirrers and you'd line them up at the front and the back. And the advantage of that is you could then bend the fence into different angles and you could create different shapes with your fencing. So the last fence I'm going to show you is for the rural scene that I showed you earlier at the start of this video. So here are the materials you'll need. Some plasterboard tape, cocktail sticks, coffee stirrers, clamps or ordinary clothes pegs will do, some PVA glue, scissors and some paint and paint brushes. And for this one it's basically using the very same method I used for the industrial layout. So as you can see I've cut a length of tape, I've then cut it in half and then I folded it. So this is actually a quarter of a width of the tape. You can also see that I've put cocktail sticks in at closer intervals and this will help create a nice wonky rustic looking fence. As you can see I've also left the ends of the cocktail sticks in place and this is because when it comes time to fix this fence to your layout you simply push it into your base. I use polystyrene a lot for my bases and so this is a very easy way to fix my fence to the base of the layout. So next I'm going to trim off these tops, the tops of the cocktail sticks. I'm going to do that right now and then I'm going to show you how I paint it. So I've cut the tops off the cocktail sticks and now I'm going to paint it. And for this I'm using burnt sienna and black and I'm going to mix this very loosely. I don't want to create a uniform dark brown colour. I want to create a nice streaky colour and this is going to look a little bit like rusted metal. So don't mix it too much. Keep it, keep it kind of streaky like that. I'm just going to put my cardboard base down here to protect my mat and then I'm just going to simply paint as I did before and again push it right in. And what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm probably going to go over this with a little bit more of the burnt sienna just to create that nice rusty look. As it's quite small just don't overload the brush too much because you don't want the paint filling in the mesh. I'm just going to turn it over and do the back now. And for this one, you don't have to be too perfect. It needs to look a little bit distressed. So I think that's quite nice. I think it needs a little bit more of the burnt sienna brown. So I'm just going to add bits to it, touches there. 
Another thing you can do is you can play around with a little bit of white. That also gives a light, lightly distressed look to it. And then make sure that you do the tops of the cocktail sticks where you've cut the raw edge there. And all I need to do now is leave that to dry and then it will be done. So there you go, three easy fences for you to make for your model railway layout, whatever the gauge, whatever the era. I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy this project. I hope you enjoy the video. What's this? You said I could actually have a go at any sort of light colours. Yeah, but this is multicoloured. Yeah, it's like we saw at Poland. What? I don't remember that. We went on all the trams. I didn't see something like, like that. Yeah, well, you know, when I like cleared off for about half an hour, yeah, you said you went to get a fillet of fish. Yeah, I went to the zoo. The zoo? Yeah, that's the elephant enclosure. It was like that. So you mean all this time while I've been videoing with the camera in front of me, you've been off painting this? Yeah. Well, why do I even need you then? Next video, I'll just do it by myself. Yeah, the reason you need me is because people only watch it because of me. I'm grumpy cameraman. Oh, shall we try it? Next video, I'll do it by myself. Well, I'll take this away then. Please do. Yeah. If you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my future videos.